In this exercise, we're going to see what the effect is of investing or buying machinery for creating jewels. The first table on top here has all the relevant values. The first thing we are going to do is actually change the names from B1, you see on top here, B1, to B10. So I can just select it over here and replace it with a proper name. So the first one's going to be A1 machinery needs to be the name of the cell. So B1 is going to be replaced with machinery. Okay, I know this depends from your version of Excel, but you should find it uh, without too many difficulties. Um, it's called naming cells, right? So uh, we're going to do that for every cell. So I'm going to take this one, stand on B2, replace it. You see that description rate has a white place in it. That's a special character you cannot use in a cell. So we're going to replace it by an underscore. The same with product cost jewelry. What we need to do there is we need to replace both the white space and the slash. So I replace the slash and the white space. That's it. Same for material costs. Standing on B4, placing slash, replacing white space, price jewel sold, replacing white spaces. Hop, hop, demand year one. That's B6, and now it's called demand year one. The yearly increase demand, well, that's going to be novice name. We don't need the compared to year one there. We don't need to make the names too long either, right? They need to be clearly distinguishable. So, text rate, and last but not least, the discount rate. There you go. Up, that's it. So I'm going to check if I've got all the names. Oh, no. Okay. I forgot a few. Um, that happened because I probably forgot to push enter. There you go. That's this, 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 this. Okay, text rate. I forgot to push enter also. There you go. And that's it. So now everything is okay. And I can start with the real exercise. Down here you see a table where we spread, uh, we're going to look at the uh, next five years. And the first thing we want to calculate is the numbers of jewels sold. Now you see that you start with 100 and there's a yearly increase demand of 20. Uh, compared with year one, that means that year one that's 100, year two 120, year three 140, year 460. But we want that as a formula, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this, year 1, that's what we start with, and then we need to multiply it with the yearly increased demand. How do you do that? Well, you start with saying you multiply with 1, that's what you start with, plus the year you're in, minus 1, multiplied with the yearly increase. And you do it this way, because now the first year it's 1 minus 1, is going to be 0, it's just going to be demand in year one, while every next year it's going to calculate as we want it. You see, that's it. Revenue, what's revenue? The numbers of jewels sold multiplied with the price we get for one jewel. That's this. And we do it for every year. What is the cost? Again, we start with the numbers of jewels sold. We multiply it with the costs, right? So the costs that are two, the production costs plus the material cost. That's this one. And that's 500 and so on for other years. It's of course very easy numbers now because we just make a simple example. The deprecation rate, well, that's our 20, 25,000 multiplied with the deprecation year. We are going to spread it over five years, right? So saying that the cost is spread over five years, this is actually just done for calculating the taxes. We're gonna need to undo it later on. So um, operational earnings, what is it? It's the revenue minus the costs minus the deprecation rate. So in the first year, in this way, we didn't actually earn anything, we made losses. Same for the next, well, not the same for the sex the second year, but there's gonna be not so much operational earnings in the second year, right? 
Now the accumulative result. What's the accumulative result? Well, the first year there is no accumulative result, right? So the first year the accumulative result will just be the operational earnings. Oh, sorry. It copied the function. That's not what we wanted. We actually just want C19. That's it. Okay? So that's just for the first year. In every next year, what we need to do is to look if we actually paid taxes the year before. So if it's negative, we didn't pay taxes, we made losses, we need to take that into account. So, um, or we paid taxes or we didn't pay taxes. So what we first need to do is create an if, if, see if this value is negative. If the value is negative, so mine is smaller than zero, if it's negative, then we add it to our current operational uh, earnings, which is positive and see what we come up, right? So we do this plus this. In case it is positive, then we actually just want to, um, so it means this one was positive, meaning that we have paid taxes down here, meaning that we only need to look at this year. So then we just need to look at D19, that's it. That's our formula, you see minus 500 plus 400, minus 100 this will have an effect on taxes i'll explain right away first gonna copy paste it for the other years so taxable what does taxable mean taxable means that um the way we spread the deprecation allowed us to get uh to an effect over several years and when it's when it's negative it means we didn't have any earnings meaning we don't actually need to pay taxes because we didn't make any earnings right so the first thing we need to check is if this value is negative. Oh, sorry, for, forgot to put comma. This value is negative. Is it negative? Yes. Well, no taxes. If it's positive, it's going to be that value. Okay, so the first year it is negative. The second year it's also negative. The next year is going to be positive. So notice over here, Although we have positive earnings, we have a negative accumulative results, so we are not going to pay taxes. What's the taxes? Well, that's easy. You have the taxable value multiplied with the taxes. Zero the first two years. Notice in the third year, you actually had an operational earning of 1,300, where you're only going to pay taxes for 1,200, right? And in the fourth and the fifth year, you're going to pay all your taxes. So what has been our operational earning after taxes? That's going to be um, the operational earning before taxes minus taxes. So the first year it's negative, so it's just going to be the 500, right? The second year, what you see is although it's positive, because the accumulative result is negative, we actually don't pay any taxes. There you go. The third year we don't pay all taxes and then the fourth year and the fifth year we pay all the taxes that's it and um, with this we can now actually calculate the real operational cash flow because what we've done here is we spread the two thousand uh, 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 the twenty five thousand we had to pay for the machinery over the five years as to calculate the the tax effect but actually in reality we pay this at front in year zero, right? We pay it at front. So we start with minus 2000, uh, 25,000. So what is then our operational cash flow in the first year? Well, we, we have this um, operational earning after taxes, minus 500, but we had the deprecation as well. So what we now need to do is get the deprecation back in it. So it's C18 plus operational taxes after. In this case, it's negative, so it's going to be smaller, right? But in the next year, it's going to be positive, so it's going to be more than 5,000. Okay, that's our operational cash flow. For the cumulative cash flow, um, again, I'm going to uh, need this value, right? Uh, because what we're going to do is we're going to start with minus. 25,000 and then we're gonna um, add the uh, operational tax flow to it so what we have is we have 
this value plus what you actually have as operational cash flow in that year. So it's going to be negative, right? And now you see that until the fifth year, it stays negative. So it stays negative, and only the fifth year we actually get out of it. So this is what we need to calculate for seeing if something is inside the payback period. Now, th this formula is going to be a little bit uh, more complicated. What you see is it's going to be a value between zero, meaning that it's not in the payback period anymore, and one, meaning that the whole year is in the payback period. And you see when it's negative, like over here, the whole year is going to be in the payback period. But in the last year, the fifth year, it's positive. So we actually need to figure out with this value and this value, right, how much it was in the payback period. So what's going to be that formula? Well, we start with if uh, this value is negative, right? We always need to check at the year before this value negative so now we actually just the first time it's a little bit tricky because this is not the year zero but this was the investment okay uh, smaller than zero what do we have well if it is negative okay I'm making a mistake over here um, we need to check if this value is negative right if this value is negative, it means the whole year is in the payback period. I made a mistake because um, the second if is going to be um, looking at the previous year. So the first year, it's f this is negative, it's 1 because it's fully in the payback period. If it's not negative, it means positive, right? W or 0. Uh, what we need to check is if previous year was in the payback period. So now we need to look at this value, see if it's smaller than zero. If not, we're gonna need to do something. If it is, if, if it's smaller than zero, so if, if it's negative, we need to calculate it. If it's bigger than uh, zero, it's not in the period period, it's gonna be zero, right? So the second, oh yes. So the second value is gonna be zero, okay? Well, we still need this value here in between. So how do you calculate this value in between? I think there are several ways to do that. Um, like, but the, the smallest one is to just have this value and divide it by, to divide the value of last year, uh, the cumulative cash flow of last year with the operational cash flow of this year. But it's a negative number, so you need to put a minus between uh, before. So it's this divided by this. There are other cases where they say 1 minus uh, this value divided by this value, but if you see that the cumulative cash flow is actually created by the operational cash flow, you get the same formula. Okay, so that's our function. First year, it is negative, of course, so it's going to be 1, 1, 1, and then the last year, it's going to be a, a number between 1 and 0. Okay, so... Um, Maybe you don't know which kind of functions you can get, so what you should actually do is get to the um, menu and select functions, and then you have this formula bar where you can actually see what kind of function exists, or even search for NPV, for example, for net present value, see all the financial things, but, well, let's just close this. So it's going to be an interface, but I don't think it's really uh, so much adding, so I'll just type it, NPV open what you see over here now is that you have the rate what's the rate well that's the discount rate right and what's the second value it's value one now value one is gonna be from year one to year five because the net present value works on the operational cash flow not on the previous investment the year null year zero doesn't exist right so we need from this to keep the control uh, the shift in to this so if you keep the shift in this is going to be a double points you're going to have select the whole region right and you close this and this is going to be our npv value so now we calculated np value of course what you need to keep in mind is that um, you made an initial investment so you need to remove the initial investment of this and this is of course our machinery 
subscribe. So that's gonna, oh, let's get everything nice in view. So it's gonna be this country, the first year to the fifth year to calculate the net present value, and then take off the machinery, the initial cost. This is gonna be your value. For the internal return rate, you actually need your investment as well, right? So the function is called ERR, open it. And now you need the whole line, so also the investment. So you go from investment to the last value, that's it, 5.43. Then we have the uh, payback period, that's exactly why we calculated these numbers over here. We need to make a sum, sum, quite easy, sum from year one to year five, right? So it's going to be four year and a bit. That's it, right? Okay, so that's the exercise. You can actually start playing around with it as well. I mean, think about it, a discount rate of three, that's a little bit low. I would think that people would actually need to pay more. Um, so if you, for example, just play with this, let's say five, you'll see that the MPV is gonna be a whole lot smaller, right? So maybe 10 is a, is a reasonable number. Gonna be negative oh no when it's negative what does it mean it means it's not a good idea to invest in it so if you have a discount rate of 10 don't bother okay that's it for this exercise